Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. It's a sunny day. Uh, it's about 70 degrees out there. Last week it snowed. T today it's a, it's a beautiful day, blue skies. And there's no rain in the forecast here in the Sierra, which is not a good thing. I bragged in a prior episode that I could install a coax connector in under a minute. And actually, I have no idea if I can or can't. And so I'm up for the challenge. Let's see what happens. I'll uh, move the camera, put a timer on one of the monitors that's across the room, it's on my work desk, and see how long it takes. And I'll try to videotape as best I can what I'm doing as I do it. We'll see how long it takes. Uh, it should be kind of fun. Why should you install coax connectors? What's the purpose? Why not just buy the cable with them already installed? Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons. And I think my main reason for recommending that you install your own coax connectors and so often I bought cables from suppliers in the U.S. and found that the coax connector was not installed properly. In most cases they're using a solder type connector and um, they don't have any connection to the braid. The holes are filled with solder, but it's a cold solder joint. I've had cold solder joints at the uh, center conductor also. And I've had just the whole thing come apart. Um, so if you put on your own connector you're going to save some money it'll probably be a much better RF connector and you can take some comfort in that you did it yourself now the way I'm going to show you uh, the process I'm going to show you is the one that I use and there are other ways to do it there are plenty of videos on the internet with guys putting on coax connectors many of them are just flat wrong but it, you know you can do it that way or not or you can try my way if you want and it's kind of interesting and kind of fun and it goes pretty fast under a minute well we'll find out um, coax connectors the standard coax connector that we all use is a PL259 and it's a great connector can take 1500 watts all day long as we found when I daisy chained a bunch of them together uh, I'm going to do that test a different way a guy guy sent an email to me and recommended I do it uh, using a signal generator and I think that's a cool idea so I'm going to try it. But anyway, that when I chained together 20 some odd coax connectors there was virtually no loss. So you can put on your own coax connector, you can also cut your coax to length. For example, if you have 57 feet to the antenna and you want to cut the coax at, let's say 60 feet, well you can do that. Cut it off, put on a coax connector, you've got 40 feet maybe left over. Uh, you can use that for another project or another antenna. The main coax connector, the point I was getting to is, um, uh, here's one, is a uh, PL259. And it, uh, the uh, matching female is a socket SO239. But the correct name for this isn't PL259. If you, like I do, I order these literally by the thousand from the manufacturer uh, this they know it's a PL259 of course but the proper name and the way I ordered it is UHF mail yeah UHF is it a UHF connector no it's not but it's called a UHF mail well how the hell did that happen well it's because when this was uh, designed it UHF was 30 megahertz and above seriously it was so hard to get to 30, they considered it an ultra-high frequency. And this was the connector for that purpose, as coax was beginning to take hold probably uh, was before World War II, and then after World War II, it became ubiquitous. In the 1950s and 60s, the common coax, uh, two, two types of coax, are not the two types of coax that are in common use today. At that time, it was RG8U and RG8AU, basically the same connector, uh, sorry, same cable but a slight difference uh, with the center conductor. The other really popular coax was RG58 and that's what is, is a novice in 1963 that's what I used and pretty much that's what we all used uh, because it was relatively inexpensive and frankly the cables in were really really good. Uh, Belden for example made just spot-on great coax. Today the two common coaxes are RG213. RG8X is probably the most popular. RG213 is next. 
and then, then underneath that the uh, LMR 400 type coax which comes by a couple of different numbers um, because it's a slightly lower loss is also really popular but RG8X whoops dropped it RG8X this stuff is um, is really really good okay that one's on the floor I'll get one that isn't on the floor <laughs> and, uh, let's see how long it takes me to put it together um, I'm debating on whether or not I want to strip the coax first or uh, prepare the coax uh, with a coax prep tool or uh, just go ahead and make it so I don't know let's pause here I'll be right back we'll see what happens can he do it in under a minute who knows W6LG be right back QRX start the clock and see what happens here we go it's at one minute so spin this around twist that off oh I forgot to put on the, uh, the shell and the ferrule that would not be good so let's put that on and um, get this off well that's going to take some time away Slip this on. Push the braid up and over. Flip the ferrule on. Crimp it. Well, I'm fumbling, <laughs> uh, but the soldering gun got hot. Okay, let's go ahead and flow some solder into the pin. Uh, looks like this is going to take two minutes. So much for my one minute bragging. So I'm going to heat the um, center conductor and the pin at the same time, and I'm going to flow in the solder. Otherwise, it'll be a cold solder joint. So I've got to hit the wire and the pin to get it to flow. So both have got to be hot. Normally I use a thing called a helping hand to hold it. It becomes kind of like a third hand. Okay, that's done. Alright, I finished the coax connector. It took like a minute 50 seconds. And what's good about this particular coax connector, there's a lot of things good about it. Um, one is it's silver plated so solder flows pretty easily. It's CNC machined, which means it's a beautifully made coax connector. Um, the insulation material, that white stuff is Teflon. Um, it's a great connector and it's better than you're going to find on some commercially made stuff. To weatherproof this, uh, there's really only one good way to do it and that's, that is with raincoat tape. And as it turns out, this piece of coax was part of a ballon that I took down and I made the ballon uh, using raincoat tape. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six ferrite beads. The interesting thing about this tape is it only sticks to itself, really. I mean, it, it's on this roll and it doesn't stick because it's got a plastic coating. But once you remove that plastic coating, stretch it and apply it to something, it's going to stick. And to prove that to you, let's slice this off and see what happens. Uh, I'm trying to get it in the frame here. Not stab myself in the process. And you can see that uh, it's very springy. This was outside for years. There's no evidence of any water getting in. Water basically can't get in. This is the really the best way to seal coax. Um, there you have it. If I peel the rest of it off, you can see it's just ferrite beads. So I made a ballon. Saved a bunch of money. The uh, ferrite beads, I bought them wholesale. They were like a, a buck a piece. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six ferrite beads on a piece of coax, and that was a ballon. Nifty, huh? Raincoat tape, PL259, silver-plated Teflon, good stuff. Can you do it under a minute? Uh, no, but you can come close. Anyway, I'm going to move the camera back up. Uh, <laughs>
Damn. I was hoping I could do it under a minute. Maybe if I prepped the coax ahead of time, but uh, clearly two minutes is workable. So um, two minutes is the answer. I failed at one minute. W6LG, stopping the camera. Be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. And um, I failed. Couldn't do it in under a minute. Can do it under two minutes. A um, couple of quick words about tools. This is a really good uh, crimp tool. Actually, this is a crimp frame. And that's a die, and the holes are die cavities. What makes this good is it's four layers, four laminated layers thick of steel. It's just as strong as can be. Um, whether you buy the ones that I sell or somebody else's, get one that looks like this. The ones that have the ergonomically correct handles and or other changes, I've never had good luck with them. I've tested some, I've bought some, I've gotten rid of them. This is one I've had for 10-15 uh, years on the website and um, it's really well made. Uh, the dies are great, they're, they're embossed. These particular dies uh, have more cavities in them than the standard dies do so it accommodates more different kinds of coax. Basically uh, anything from LMR 400 down to um, RG58 I think would be the smallest. Doesn't the 174 is a different size. Um, like this tool, it weighs about a pound and a half, so it's heavy duty. Uh, the ones I like you might find at the discount places like Harbor Freight, um, I've bought some similar ones to that. Frankly, they're crap, and the problem with them is uh, they're not four layers thick, they're two, and the part that holds the die, whatever this part of the tool is called, as you look at them, uh, or as I've bought them, uh, they're not aligned properly. So when the tool closes, it doesn't properly close on the die. They're out of alignment. One side is flared out slightly, slightly from the other. So there's no quality control in the manufacturing. Um, get a decent tool like this. Um, if, and I, I'm not here to sell stuff, but if there's an interest in some kind of a deal, I'll, you know, if a bunch of guys want these things, uh, they sell every day anyway, but I'll do some kind of a sale, maybe special for YouTube. It's been fun doing this. I've got some other things uh, lined up to do. I'm trying to keep these videos shorter. I made a couple that just didn't pan out because the microphone failed and other stuff went on. Uh, one of them I uploaded to uh, to YouTube. I immediately got an email from a buddy of mine, uh, K7AGE, Randy Hall, and he said, you need to delete it. <laughs> and so I went back and I listened to it and the audio was so bad he was right. And of course he's done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos and He's a video expert. That's been his job for many years. Anyway, um, thank you for the notes. I've gotten some really, really nice emails. Uh, I'm thrilled with what I've received. Uh, all of them very complimentary. All of them very nice. Some guys have sent suggestions. Uh, some of those I haven't answered yet. Another video that I've made a couple times and then trashed because it was just... It's decibels. And we'll, we'll cover that. Um, Decibels are easy to a point, but once I start describing it, it becomes muddled in, in uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 10 times 2, and the answer is 20 times. But I'll try to remake that and make some sense of it. In any case, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I've enjoyed doing these. It's been kind of fun. I want to do the challenging things. Um, I've got a lot of stuff planned. We'll just see, see what happens. Hopefully, uh, I won't set anything on fire which I've done more than one time. <laughs> Quick aside, uh, you can stop here if you want or you can hear the story. But as a kid I ran ladder line up the side of a hill because I had about 250 feet to a three element tri-band Yagi uh, TA33 which worked great and it was in uh, the foothills of Burbank near the DeBell golf course if you know where that is. And I ran down to the house. I made the ladder line myself using uh, ceramic insulators. And I, I uh, believe it or not, I climbed that hill. And over the course of the summer, I put in 4x4 four four posts. And I ran it, the wood posts. And I ran it all the way down. Uh, we had the crank out casement windows with the aluminum frame. And ran it to a Johnson Viking something tuner. I forget what it was called, the big box. And uh, hooked it up to the linear and went on the air with it. And uh, it worked great. Oh, God, it worked wonderful. I had no line loss. Uh, line line is virtually lossless. It worked great for a few minutes. What I had done was uh, 
I had decided I needed to kind of seal the opening around the window because I left it partly open. So I took some old pieces of clothing and cloth and uh, filled the gap. Yeah. It arced from the uh, two wires to the metal frame and set the, uh, the cloth on fire. My next door neighbor was a baseball player for the Dodgers. He was a catcher. His name was Norm Sherry. Really a nice guy. Was he pissed? Oh, my God. He was yelling at the top of his lungs. Uh, because he saw these flames coming out my window, and we were in the Burbank foothills, which were just as dry as can be. I ran outside, around the corner, pulled it all down. Fortunately, I didn't set myself on fire and stamped it out while he's just over the fence and at me like a catcher running out to uh, an umpire to plead his case. Anyway, yes, I've set stuff on fire, and more than, more than once. Anyway. Thank you for letting me ramble. I'm an old guy. 7-3 from Jim, W6LG. We'll see you the next time. Maybe we'll talk about decibels. Oh. All right, thanks.